So in this lecture, I will talk about the simultaneous linear equation. And in specific, we talk about the algorithm or the method that we call LDL transpose to solve simultaneous linear equation. Okay, this is lecture number 24, and the topic for this lecture is LDL transpose method for solving system of simultaneous linear equation. Now, if you remember, back in the lecture number 23, we are trying to solve the system of linear equation represented in the matrix notation as AX equal to B. And in the previous method, which is the Cholesky method, we assume that the matrix A is symmetric, positive, definite. Now, if that matrix is symmetric, positive, definite, then we can use Cholesky that we discussed in the previous lecture. However, in many engineering and science applications, the matrix still symmetric. That is true. However, it may not be positive, definite. In fact, it could be even negative definite. So in that case, then what can we do? Well, in that situation, then we can use another algorithm, which we call LDL transpose factorization. And the idea is this. The given matrix A, this time it is still required to be symmetric but it does not have to be positive definite. So in this situation, we want to factorize or decompose a matrix A into the product of L, D, L transpose. Now, the matrix D is a diagonal matrix. And the matrix L is a lower triangular matrix. However, you need to pay attention, the lower triangular matrix L, it always have the value equal to 1 on the diagonal. And therefore, if you know the matrix L, the transpose of the matrix L obviously is given in the detail right there, shown in equation 24. So in this phase, which is called a factorization phase, Okay, which is called, right now we're talking about phase one, or step number one. In this phase one, or step number one, basically we want to do factorization of the matrix A. And what that means is we have to figure out the matrix L, and we have to figure out the diagonal matrix D. Now, to make the discussion easy for you to understand, I assume the matrix A is a 3 by 3 matrix, as shown in here, the matrix A, 3 by 3, symmetric, but does not have to be positive definite. So, if we want to factor out into LDL transpose, as shown in equation 24, that means we have to figure out the three unknown in the matrix D, and we also need to figure out another three unknown in the matrix L. So which basically mean we have a total of six unknown that we have to figure out. Three unknown from the matrix D and another three unknown from the matrix L. And because we have six unknown, obviously we need to have six equation. So how do we get those six equation? Well, the idea is very simple, just like before. All you have to do is to multiply this triple three product matrices. And after you multiply them out, symbolically, it can be represented as a three by three matrix like that. OK, symbolically. Then after you do all of those things, the last thing you will do will be you take each term of the upper triangular matrix on the right hand side and you equate that to the corresponding term 
on the left hand side. So for example, you will equate this term with A11. You equate this term right here with A23 and so on so on. That way, then you will get six equations. And from those six equations, you can solve for three unknown for matrix D and three unknown for the matrix L. That is the main idea. Now, what happens if the matrix is bigger than 3 by 3? It could be 4 by 4, 10 by 10, or 100 by 100. The idea is still the same. And if you go through the same process, mathematician already developed a general formula for us to solve for the diagonal matrix D. And also, mathematician can develop another formula for us to find out a different term of the matrix L. So for a general matrix, 3 by 3, 10 by 10, we should use equation 25 to calculate the diagonal matrix term and equation 26 to calculate the lower triangular matrix L. But we have to do it according to a certain order, which will become obvious to you in the next few slides. Now, so in step number one, which is factorization phase, let's say we already know how to figure out the matrix L and the matrix D. We already figured it out. The next step will be, if you remember, originally we are supposed to have the system equation expressed as AX equal to B. And the matrix A now can be represented as LDL transpose, if you remember, right? Based on step number one, we already expressed A in terms of LDL transpose. So what is the next thing you can do? Well, the next thing we can do is this. This product, which is L transpose times X, we determine it is the same thing as Y. Is y. So now, instead of L transpose x, you can think this is like a vector y. Okay? That's the first step. And then, the next step will be, you say, how about the product of a matrix D times a vector y? Well, D time vector Y will give it a new name. We call it as the vector Z. So instead of say D time Y, we give it a new name. We call it vector Z. So this whole thing here become a vector Z based on my new notation. And therefore, at the end, from equation 27, from this equation, what you have will be a lower triangular matrix L, is still there, multiplied with the vector Z that we just introduced, and then equal to the vector B. From this equation, we should be able to solve for the intermediate vector z. And actually, in this step, we call it is a forward solution. Forward solution. Forward solution. We can use the forward solution phase to solve for the unknown vector z. And the reason is because the, vac the matrix L, you already know from step one, and the vector B, you already know, because it's given. After you solve for the vector Z, then the next step, as you can remember, it say right here, dy is equal to Z. Okay? So, if, since you already solve for the vector Z, based on this equation right there, and the matrix D is known, 
Therefore, we can solve for the intermediate vector y. This phase, we call it diagonal scaling. Diagonal scaling. Diagonal scaling. And then finally, after you solve for the vector y, then we can go back to this equation here, which basically say uh, L times Z equal to B, and we can solve for the last unknown, which I will explain to you more detail in the subsequent slides. And by the way, in the diagonal scaling phase, in the long form, we can express as shown in equation 29. And from that equation, you can see it is very easy, assuming you already solve for z1, z2, z3, then the unknown vector a y1, y2, y3 can be easily solved by just divide by the diagonal term d11 or d22 or d33 very easily. So let's take a look at the next slide. You see, the matrix L we already obtained at the end of step one, factorization phase. The vector B is given. And therefore, we can solve for the intermediate vector Z, like I told you in the previous slide. This is exactly, we call it forward solution step. Forward solution. Forward solution phase we can obtain for the vector z. And from this equation, 31, you can see very clearly, we can look at the first equation, and that will help us to solve for the unknown vector, the unknown z1. And then after that, we look at the second equation. That will help us to solve for the unknown z2. And then after that, we look at the third equation, and that will help us to solve for the unknown z3. And therefore, in general, we come up with a formula that show you right here. This formula will help us to figure out z with the subscript i, where the subscript i could be either 1 or 2 or 3, depending on you want to solve for z1 or z2 or z3. Okay? so. Based on equation 31, which is the same thing as equation 32, we can easily solve for the intermediate vector z, which is the forward solution phase. Now, after we solve for the 